The 8800 digital radio test set display can be configured to simultaneously present a wide range of test data and control. Because the 8800 display presents a high degree of customization, the first step in getting the most out of your 8800 is attaining a firm grasp on how to operate the graphical user interface. In other words, this video will describe how to get from here to here. The 8800 meters and controls are set up as configurable tiles. For example, the generator has its own tile, the receiver has its own tile, and a meter will have its own tile, and so on. The tiles are freely arranged on the 800 by 600 touchscreen display. A tile can be positioned by touching a window and dragging it with a finger or stylus. A mouse or a keyboard connected to the front USB connector can be used to move and interface with the individual tiles. In fact, both a mouse and a keyboard can be connected to the rear panel USB connectors, leaving the front panel USB connector free for other tasks. The rear panel also contains an Ethernet port, which allows the 8800 to be operated remotely from a computer through a VNC session. The arrow keys can be used to select and increment numerical data. The function of the home key plays a significant role in the setup of the 8800 test presentation. Right now, we'll clear the display and start with a blank slate. At the top of the display is the minimized launch bar. Selecting the minimized launch bar will display the full launch bar containing the function icons. The function icons are used to access the various test tiles of the 8800 for display. Selecting the launch bar again will remove the function icons from the display. At the bottom of the display is the minimized status bar. Selecting the status bar will display the status icons. The status icons are used for such things as selecting between internal-external frequency reference and opening the snapshot function window, as well as providing status on battery charge, error messages, and so forth. Once the status bar is open, the open close status icon is used to maximize then close the status bar. Before moving on with the positioning of the tiles, let's take a look at the function of the home key. Pressing the home key reveals the system menu. In this video, we are going to concentrate on the system menu items that affect the display. The Hide Icons button is used to remove the system icon status bar from the display. The system icons are quite useful, but there are times when they can also obstruct the view or get in the way of things. For example, here, even the Minimize Status Bar is obstructing the Stack button of the digital DMOD tile. Pressing the Hide Icons button will remove the icon bar from the display. Note that the status bar has been removed from the display. Once the status bar is hidden from view, selecting the Show Icons button will bring it back. Pressing the Hide Menu button will remove the launch bar from the display. The 
The backlight control is used to adjust the backlight brightness. This is useful, for example, for viewing the display while operating the set in a sunlit environment. The menu timeout delay controls the amount of time a function icon drop-down menu remains open. The location of this control is well worth knowing, because if the time is set too short, the menu can disappear before you've decided which function to select. To demonstrate, we'll set the menu timeout delay to a very small value. Previously, we hid the launch bar, so now we'll select Show Menu to display the launch bar. Now, as an example, we'll select the Utilities Function drop-down menu. Note how quickly the menu disappears before actually selecting anything from the menu. That was pretty fast. When the menu timeout delay is set for a low value, the menu may disappear before you found the function you wish to select. When first getting used to the screen operations, you can set the menu timeout to a longer value, then adjust it for a shorter time when you are more familiar with the location of the controls. Now that we have covered the basic screen operations, let's look at selecting and arranging the test tiles. We'll access the function icons and select the generator tile. The generator tile is located in the generator's function icon drop-down menu. After displaying the generator tile, we'll select the launch bar to remove the function icons from the display. To position the generator tile, touch it and drag it around the display. If you are using the touchscreen, be sure to move your finger slowly. Using the fingernail or a stylus allows more precise acquisition and movement of the tile. Avoid grabbing a tile around an entry field or by the Minimize Maximize icons. This might accidentally open a field for editing, minimize the tile, or maximize the tile instead. Instead, grab it around the title block or a clear background space. Each tile has a view size icon, which will size the tile in larger or smaller views. Sizing a tile for a larger view provides access to settings that may not be available in the smaller view. Each tile will also have a minimize icon. This icon will remove the tile from view, but the settings will still remain active. Next, we'll display the receiver tile. As with all tiles, the receiver tile can be freely moved around the display and it can be resized. Now we'll select the modulation meter from the meters menu. Note that, generally, the meters tiles will have three sizes available. The maximum size in this case is full screen. Now we'll add another tile. Since we have the generator tile selected, we'll add the generator modulation tile.
The tiles can be freely moved to any position on the display. To aid in organization of the tiles, the tiles are sized so they can easily fit on the display side by side. To further aid in organizing the tiles for display, the 8800 can actually snap the tiles to a grid. As one tile is moved beside another tile, or to the edge of the screen, the tile will snap into place with no overlap. For example, we'll move the modulation tile towards the right edge of the display. As the tile nears the edge of the display, it will snap into position. This invisible grid aids in devising an orderly layout of the tiles with no overlap between tiles. Notice that the modulation tile has an additional icon. This icon is used to bring any tile below the modulation tile to the top. This operation is called stacking, and the icon is called the stack icon. To demonstrate the purpose of stacking, we'll add another stackable tile, the audio function generator. Now we'll stack the AF Gen tile on top of the modulation tile. Note that the AF Gen tile is now stacked on top of the modulation tile. Pressing the stack icon will bring whatever is underneath the tile to the top of the stack. In this case, we'll bring the modulation tile to the top by selecting the stack icon. The stack function allows an even greater number of tiles to be used simultaneously in a test display. Several stackable tiles can be placed into the stack. The stack icon will rotate through the stack each time it is selected. In this case, only two tiles, the AF Gen and Modulation tiles, are stacked. So each time the stack icon is selected, the display will toggle from one tile to the other. Using the grid and the sizing functions, a screen containing all of the functions and measurements for a particular test can be easily built. Another method of quickly building a test display is through the use of the built-in presets. The presets are found in the Utilities function menu. The presets can be selected from a submenu or from the software submenu itself. The selection of presets may vary with the option configuration of the set. The clear display preset will remove all displayed tiles from the screen. The digital and analog presets will configure the set for digital and analog testing, respectively. We'll cover the presets in depth later on, but right now we'll demonstrate loading the digital preset.
loading the digital preset has configured the 8800 with tiles necessary to begin testing a digital radio, in this case, a DMR radio. This concludes the graphical user interface portion of this video series. Armed with this knowledge, you can proceed through the rest of the videos and start getting the most out of your 8800.